What you're doing here is you're breaking down a goal into smaller chunks, but you're not forgetting about the big goal. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people make the mistake of thinking like, oh, but the universe is going to forget. The universe never forgets that I actually want this thing. No, it's trust me. The universe is very smart, probably smarter than you. It understands that you want this, but you have to wrap your mind around it because there's an incongruence between what you believe is possible and what is actually possible. And as long as there is an incongruence, it's like the placebo effect, like what you believe is what will happen. You have this genius distinction. When I tell you like, this is the person I go to when I need to drop in and remember like, oh yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, that's, that's where I need to tweak my mindset. Like you really just have this beautiful, succinct way of teaching principles that could be complicated, but they're Mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about the ladder of believability as a way to stair step your way into these bigger manifestations, that changed my life. Really? Like actually changed my life whenever I learned it. So I want you to just clarify that for us because what I can hear in maybe someone listening to this is, okay, well, that's great, but I can't even stretch my mind to think that Mm -hmm. far. And I, I can see I've stopped myself by almost casting the net too far, casting the vision too far where it's so unbelievable to my mind. I check out, but you have this brilliant way of working with your mind and how it's wired to stair step your way there. Will you talk about that? Yeah, of course. Let me just go back to where I discovered this and discovered its power, which was I noticed that like every goal I would set on New Year's Eve would be way too ambitious, Mm. way too outlandish. And that's not to say it's not, it could never happen, but it's just, I noticed like nothing that I've ever put down on my New Year's, not resolution list, not like I'm going to get in shape, but just like what I want to call in, what Mm -hmm. my goals are. Mm -hmm. I would create these goals. And every time it was too many goals, it was crazy numbers. Like this is the year I become a billionaire. Like I'm, I'm broke. Like what are we talking? Grandma's couch. Yeah. I'm on grandma's couch. Like, what are we doing here? What are we talking about? (laughs) Or like, I'm going to have 17 million followers, right? Like just outlandish. And so I thought to myself, what if I just simplified this? And what if I tried something again, this was actually within my one year experiment. And so I was just in this vibe of like, radical experimentation. Yeah. Radical experimentation. Like, let's just try it. Why not? Like, what do we have to lose people? We have nothing to lose. And so I was like, okay, so let me try something different. Let me narrow it to three goals. And then let me create something where it's a stretch, but it's not blowing my sockets out. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not Mm -hmm. stressing, thinking about accomplishing this in the next 12 months. So with the ladder of believability, It's important to understand that what you're doing here is you're breaking down a goal into smaller chunks, but you're not forgetting about the big goal. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people make the mistake of thinking like, oh, but the universe is going to forget. The universe never forgets that I actually want this thing. No, it's trust me. The universe is very smart, probably smarter than you. It understands that you want this, but you have to wrap your mind around it because there is an incongruence between what you believe is possible and Mm -hmm. what is actually possible. And as long as there is an incongruence, it's like the placebo effect, like yeah. what you believe is what will happen. So anyway, I had like this desire to make $500,000 in a year, but the year prior, I only made $9,000. So I'm like, that's, a you know, it just in my business. And I'm like, yeah. that's a little, it, it's just, it's not that it's impossible. Quantum leaps are very possible, but you have to put yourself in a frequency of open palms. Mm -hmm. So you have to put yourself in the frequency of total relaxation where it's like, ah, that feels good to me. It feels exciting. Yeah. feels exciting, but I'm not like pulling away because I'm like, I don't know how that's going to happen. I don't know what, you know, like, so anyway, I decided on setting a goal of a hundred thousand dollars. And for me, it's like, I think I made a total with my business, with that nine to five job, what was remaining from my fitness business. I was like, okay, I think I made like around 40, 45 K this year. So like a hundred feels good because I know that I have something here with manifestation, babe. And -hmm. I think I can make a hundred grand happen. That would be life-changing. That would be so exciting. That's six figures. Mm -hmm. I calculated what would that mean on a monthly basis. I'm like, I'm in, I'm so in on this. So that became like the rung on the ladder, the next rung on the ladder, the next stepping stone. And with that, it wasn't that I was forgetting about my big goal. It's just that I needed to put myself in a frequency of total openness. And so what ended up happening is 
I put my belief behind that. And then I ended the year actually making $600,000, even more than my top rung of the ladder. Not because, and people go like, how is that possible? Well, because I kept myself open. I kept Mm. myself in a state of anything is possible because I'm not stressing myself out Mm. by setting goals that are way too high for the moment that I'm in my life. This this period of my life that I'm in, it's just a little too much. My nervous system is going to blow out. So I got to work with my nervous system, not against my nervous system. And when you work with your nervous system, Oh my God, so much more flows in from Mm -hmm. that space because there's no constriction. There's no restriction. It's total openness. It's total receptivity. And in that place, the universe goes, well, you're open, you're ready to receive. So here you go. Yes. And I want to make it even more tangible because that's, that's a big leap. So you went from making 9,000 to 600,000 tangibly, like were you setting those micro goals month to month? Was it growing that way? Or were you just not paying attention month to month and continuing to focus on like this more palatable goal of 100K? This is such a great question. And it was actually both, I would say. I never once, I never thought about the annual goal again until the end of the year where I was like, oh my God. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. For me, it was a monthly thing. Okay. And for me, it was the, um, I think the first the first thing that I set for myself was a 5K month. Mm-hmm. Then I hit a 5K month. This is, and I'm glad, so glad you asked this question because it brought me back to like, yes, I did this actually on a month to month basis yeah. because it built even more belief in myself over the process. That makes sense. So I started with 5K mm-hmm. and then when I hit it, I think it was like the next month, I was like, okay, um, let's try 7K. Yeah. 7K and how are you deciding right? what the next stretch was? Just like feeling into my body. Yeah. Yeah, Feeling into my body. Yeah. So anything that kept me relaxed was good. And anything that made me go like just a little bit of a constriction, a little bit of a pull away, a little bit of like, I don't know how that's going to happen. Any sense of like, that's impossible. Mm -hmm. I would lean into that and ask myself, okay, is there a number that would then be a little bit lower, but not too low that we can play around with. And so I would just, I would do these check-ins cool. with how yeah. they feel. Yes. So then sense. I did 7K and then I hit 7K and I'm like, okay, what's the next number? And so I was like, okay, 11K. And then it was 11K. And then I hit, um, I think my next number is like 15K. And then it just like snowballed from there. And I still mm-hmm. do this process to mm-hmm. this day. Mm-hmm. I, it, it literally changed my relationship with manifestation. And I think because, and it sounds like you too, I have no problem being a visionary, being a big dreamer. Yeah. But what I didn't realize that, that was happening is it was my mind was disconnecting from the possibility. So it didn't feel like it had a plan to get there. Yeah. And hearing it through that frame helped me to understand how to work with how this science, this very real science does work, but to do it in a way that it wasn't disconnecting from the big vision. It was helping myself expand into it, which Going back to what you said in the beginning, that the secret to manifestation is living as though it's real today. Yeah. It's not as big of a leap 